Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting transcendental equation. In other words, it's going to be a non-standard equation because we have an exponential equation on the left and a rational equation or expression on the right. I meant expression in both cases, by the way. So how do you solve non-standard equations? You have to use a non-standard method. What is that? We'll talk about it. A very, very special method. I'll introduce a very interesting concept, a special function for those of you who are not familiar. And now let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, it is okay to guess and check. And there's a fact that makes guess and check um, somewhat easier and better for this type of problem. Again, that's something we'll talk about. I'm also going to show you the graph of these two functions so you can kind of see where they intersect, okay? So let's go ahead and start. First method, I'm going to go ahead and use my special powers. What are they? So we're going to go ahead and first of all, cross multiply. That'll give us x times 3 to the power square root of x equals 36. And then I'd like to use a special function known as Lambert's W function. And how does Lambert's W function work? It's a big W acting upon t to the t and giving us t as the output. Make sense? It takes this as an input, gives us this as an output, input, output, you know, type of function. It's the inverse function, by the way, but there's no way to express it like natural log or any type of log. So we had to use a special W. Okay, you cannot express it explicitly. So, our goal is going to be to bring our expression to this form. From this to something like this. How is that done? I'm going to show you the process. That, that's a lot of fun, by the way. Let's get into it. Now, we have an x and a square root of x. First of all, you kind of need to check, right, uh, the coefficient and the exponent. What do I mean by that? This I consider the coefficient, and this I consider the exponent. They are not the same, but we want them to be the same, like this, t and t. Not t and coffee. You don't want that, right? I mean, you can get it, but I like tea better, by the way, as a drink. So, how do I get to that form? Well, first of all, I need to make them agree. How do I do that? By getting square root of x, because you can't get x. I mean, you can square both sides, but guess what? When you square both sides, this is not going to turn into x. It's going to turn into 2 times the square root of x. Square root of x will be doubled. Make sense? So squaring both sides is not a good idea. You have to do quite the opposite, which is square rooting both sides. And let me tell you why that works. When you square root it, this is almost unaffected, but this becomes the square root of x, which is something we want to do. So this becomes square root of x times 3 to the power square root of x under the radical. But we can take care of that. And this is going to become 6. Can it be plus minus 6? No. Plus 6. Okay. And we can check that uh, at the end. What, what happens to the second expression here? Well, we can write it as 3 to the power square root of x divided by 2. And that's awesome because now these almost agree. Even though they're not the same, they can be adjusted. Okay. How? Very easy. We do need the same thing. So we do need the square root of x divided by 2 here, which means we need to divide both sides by 2. Easy, right? Divide by 2. And of course, don't forget to divide on the other side. And that's what you're going to get. Easy? Pretty cool. Now, next thing we're going to do is to fix the base. The 3 is the base, but you want e to be the base. You see, that's the third thing you need to check. How do I go from 3 to e? Easy, like this. e to the power ln a is a. So if you want to go the other direction, like start with some number a, 3, 3 can be written as e to the power ln 3. That easy. Look, so now we can do the following. Square root of x divided by 2 times 3, which is e to the power ln 3, and then I'm going to raise it to the power square root of x divided by 2 equals 3. Since I have it multiplied or divided both sides by something, I didn't do anything on the right-hand side. Notice that, but I just changed the 3. You, you, make, you make sense of it? Okay. 
Now these two are gonna be multiplied, so we can switch them. Actually bring this in, I wanna bring the square root of x over two inside. So it's gonna look like this, right? And then ln three will just be multiplied. Easy, again, three. Okay, we're almost there because now this is my new t, okay? And this is pretty close. All I have to do is multiply by ln three and that'll do the trick because now we have what we need, right? Look at this. You have everything you need. It is e to the t times e to the t. But of course, we multiply both sides by ln three, so we need to do that on the right-hand side as well. Okay, so far so good. If you're following this far, uh, I congratulate you. Uh, round of applause because it's not easy to follow up. Now, this is my t. And that's my t, so I have t e to the t. If I apply Lambert's w function on both sides, like big W here and big W here, what am I getting? Well, from the left-hand side, I'm getting the t. Remember that. On the right-hand side, we need to do some work. First of all, switch 3 and ln 3. And then write, see, uh, we kind of need to, by the way, these ln 3s don't cancel out. Don't make that mistake because one of them is inside the function, okay? So the next thing we gotta do is fix the right-hand side by changing three to e to the power ln three. And that actually does the trick, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? This is your new t, and this is your new t. You got that? So that turns into something amazing. When you apply w on it, it's gonna become ln three. And guess what? LN3s are gonna now cancel out because we don't have the W anymore. That's a one. So that gives you square root of X equals one X. Oops, I mean one times two, which is two. And from here, X equals four. Awesome. We only got one solution. So does that mean there's only one solution? Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method and maybe the graph as well. Uh, so we're gonna look at a couple things to make sure that we're on the right track and we're not making any mistakes or we're not missing anything. Remember the original equation? You, do you still remember that? It was like this. And now we're gonna use a different approach. And that approach is actually guess and check. Why? Okay, let me tell you something. This is gonna help you. And when I show you the graph, it'll make more sense. But this one, first of all, x needs to be positive. Remember that because of squared effects, we're looking for real solutions. What would happen if you look for complex solutions? Then you need to use the uh, the expansion or extension of Lambert's W into the complex or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, this uh, channel focuses on uh, real numbers and I have another channel called A plus BI that focuses on complex numbers. Go ahead and check it out as well. But here, notice that this is increasing. Why? Because exponential, the base is greater than one, it's always increasing. And this is decreasing. Why? Because as x increases, 36 over x decreases, obviously, right? So, what does this mean? This means that one of them is going up, one of them is going down. Not like that, of course, but they can only intersect at a single point. And that happens to be a perfect square because, probably, right? Because uh, we have to square root it. So you can test. x equals 1, 3 to the 1 equals 36 divided by 1. Nope. x equals 4, the next square root. I mean, the next perfect square, 3 to the 2 equals 36 divided by 4. Yep, 9 equals 9. Oops, why did I cross it out? I don't know. This checks, so yay, x equals 4 is a solution. How do we know there's only one solution? We do because one is increasing, the other one is decreasing. Again, they can only intersect at a single point. Do they have to intersect? Well, if they're continuous, negative infinity to the infinity, they should. And they are, and they do. Let's go ahead and check out the graph, shall we? Ta da 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 yes. Of course, this function uh, being uh, rational, you know, one of them, 36 over divided by x has two branches, but only one of them is valid because x needs to be positive, remember? And they intersect at four comma nine, which means x equals four once again. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to check out A plus BI. And until next time, Bye-bye.